In the case of CPUs, we all understand this. The PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 each have eight CPUs, but we never think that meant the capabilities and performance are equal. It's the same for CUs. For one thing, they've been getting much larger over time. Adding new features means adding lots of transistors. In fact, uh, the transistor count for a PlayStation 5 CU is 62% larger than the transistor count for a PlayStation 4 CU. Second, the PlayStation 5 GPU is backwards compatible with PlayStation 4. What does that mean? One way you can achieve backwards compatibility is to put the previous console's chipset in the new console, like we did with some PlayStation 3s, but that's of course extremely expensive. A better way is to incorporate any differences in the previous console's logic into the new console's custom chips, meaning that even as the technology evolves, the logic and feature set that PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro titles rely on is still available in backwards compatibility modes. One advantage of this strategy is that once backwards compatibility is in the console, it's in. It's not as if a cost down will remove backwards compatibility like it did on PlayStation 3. Achieving this unification of functionality took years of efforts by AMD, as any roadmap advancement creates a potential divergence in logic. Running PS4 and PS4 titles at boosted frequencies has also added complexity. The boost is truly massive this time around, and some game code just can't handle it. Testing has to be done on a title-by-title -title basis. Results are excellent, though. We recently took a look at the top 100 PlayStation 4 titles as ranked by playtime, and we're expecting almost all of them to be playable at launch on PlayStation 5. Hey, what's up everybody, back with a, another one. In this particular video, I want to talk about something that I'm not hearing a lot of people actually speak on, which uh, piqued my curiosity. And that is that what's really going on with the PS4 games being played on the PS5 and actually being enhanced or boost moded now. Of course, when uh, the road to uh, PlayStation 5 came out with Mark 30, doing this presentation there was a lot of little pieces of information that could be picked up if you paid close attention to what he was actually saying and what he was presenting now of course he talked about how they've implemented the ps4 and the ps4 pro backwards compatibility into the system and he also talked about boosted and enhanced modes of playing playstation 4 titles now from what I can piece together from what I've gathered information wise is that what he's really speaking on is that the main issue with the backwards compatibility is that being that the SSD and the new CPU and the GPU have such an upgrade on games that it's even more than what most people would expect so therefore they of course have to go back and test titles and see which ones work and which ones don't work but from my point of view what i'm picking up from this is that what they're saying is that not all of the games so far have been able to be utilized in the full enhanced and boost mode on the playstation 5 that's what i'm gathering from this information and from re-watching the video that's the only thing i'm basically picking up and that's why they're mostly going back and testing the vast catalog of the games to see what games they can run in this enhanced GPU, CPU, and SSD speeds. Because when you watch the video, he pretty much explains that some of the coding from the older games cannot keep up with what's being pushed with the newer enhancements, with the boost mode, if you want to call it that. So this got me to thinking, what if they don't release PS5 games? of games that are supposed to come out on ps4 like say like if we take ghost of tsushima and the last of us 2 what of in instead of you going to actually go say hey i'm gonna have to go buy that uh ps5 version of it now so i can get the enhancements what if it's already baked in what if you have the ps4 version of ghost of tsushima last of us 2 and you pop it in your ps5 and it's the enhanced versions of it instead of you actually going to go out and buy a new one you just play the uh, ps4 version and you get the enhanced version which they've already tested and checked the code on to see that it'll actually run in the enhanced mode on the ps5 this is something i thought more people would have picked up on or talked about but being how briefly it was discussed in the actual presentation 
that's a, that's one of the main reasons why a lot of people skip over it. Plus NDAs and you can't really talk about stuff even if you do know. But this does make me think about earlier rumors that were going around about how they were saying that the old PS4 titles before even the road to PlayStation was even presented, that they would have a way to enhance the old PlayStation 4 titles and make them seem like they were actually next gen with the uh, the engine. Maybe it's through the rendering, maybe it's through the geometry engineering, doing more textures and colors and lighting with the ray tracing and RDNA too. Maybe that was what they were speaking on and we got this information now. So I'm curious to see what's going to end up happening. I want to know, are we going to actually end up with PS5 versions of The Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima? Or are they going to have it baked in so we can actually play the enhanced versions of the game? So we can actually get that upgrade without actually spending that extra money. I think it's leaning more towards this, just from this presentation and watching it again and focusing on how little bit of information they actually gave like they were still holding something back like they didn't want to play all their cards yet i think we got something that we might actually have something that most people are just glancing over and not paying attention to in the long run so let me know what you think about this are we going to actually end up getting ps4 games that are ps5 advanced to the point where it's basically like we got the PS5 version of it. Time will tell. We got some months to go. A lot of time between here and holiday 2020 for the release of any next-gen consoles. And they still got a lot of information they can drop. So hopefully it leans towards this more. I really do think this could be a feature that no one is actually paying that much attention to. Because when you listen to the presentation, he says how AMD spent years of research and development trying to figure out a technique to implement this so nobody spends that much time trying to implement new technology and not taking advantage of it that's just common sense that's business 101 and investment so there you go but otherwise than that let me know what you think about this are you looking forward to actually having enhanced ps4 games that are ps5 quality or do you think this is not going to happen let me know. But otherwise than that, I will catch you all in the next one. All right, everybody.